journey took three years to make. We came up with a design that resonated with players. One thing I care a lot about when we make games at that game company is to make something beautiful. TGC and, and Matt made something there that I had genuinely never seen in a game. It was a breathtaking, beautiful visual. Its purpose was to be something that was meaningful to players, and we wanted to make something that was worth the players' time. It's the ultimate story of a hero's quest, and this has to be a classic. When I first started working on the Journey project, we were talking about this idea of a game in the online space that would bring people together. We looked around in the industry, pretty much checked out all the online console games, and I just realized, man, there's a lot of killing. It's either you are killing each other or you're killing something together. There's just a lack of connection emotionally between people. It became obvious from day one, and seeing the artwork was a big part of this, that Journey was going to be very special. Because Journey has no dialogue and it has no text, all of the story is told through the visuals and the music. Which made Matt and I kind of partners in crime as, as sort of the main vehicle for telling the story. When we're designing the visual and the music for the game, we want something classic, yet not cliché. We want something you feel familiar, that you can relate to, but something you have never seen before. When Genova asked me, what kind of visual do you see this kind of game having, I said, something where people have no choice but to be together. And that was a desert. A big, lonely landscape where the only other sign of life is another player. And so the idea behind the art is to create a space for the gameplay that makes sense. And while we're doing research on the, the desert shots, we often see photos of, you know, human beings traveling the desert with camels or maybe two human beings, you know, walking on a dune. And it's always very evocative. And I thought that is the right visual to enter because then all you are thinking about is the characters. Our character evolved from a real human character into something that is more like a cloth figure. It went through a lot of different kinds of iterations. The first characters that I designed all had arms and hands and fingers and faces. And we wanted to make the character more anonymous because we wanted people to be able to play with each other no matter who they were. So it's kind of this subtractive process. On the journey that players take, they go through a lot of different environments. They start in a desert with these warm colors. They go to this brightly colored desert with pink dunes and green skies. And then they end up in this kind of dark, misty underground passage. And eventually they arrive on these snow-capped mountains. So you see a lot of colors and a lot of environments. And they really kind of string together in a way that tells a story. The kind of evolving color scheme of the game visually was a huge part of the color scheme, so to speak, of the music. So the goal was to make the music have a similar arc. The fact that you never see blue sky until the end of the game, to me, uh, makes that moment far more powerful and beautiful. And so the first time I saw that, of course, immediately I had to figure out, well, what's the musical equivalent of that? And so, you know, for me, it ended up being the emergence of the orchestra as a, as a palette within the scores. We want you to went on a journey that's truly to some place that's exotic, yet it will relate to the life you live in. Matt's initial drawings grew and became more interesting and more sophisticated and the very specific kind of nuance of the world he was creating, you know, and that game company was generally creating, became more and more defined and more and more unique and interesting. You know, it wasn't just Greek looking ruins or Roman looking ruins, but they became journey ruins because he was able to mix all these things together. Making the visuals compelling was a definite priority for us and something that we iterated on a lot.
we were sitting around the office looking at a lot of the fan art that had come in and talking about the emotion that the game had inspired. And when we were looking at this fan art and thinking about what these people must have gone through to create these pieces, we started thinking we'd love to do an art book. Doing the art book of Journey is super exciting for me because there's a ton of art that went into the creation of Journey, the game, that has never been seen. You get to see a lot of the iterations that you won't see in the final game, and you can see how much work went in to fine-tune every element. We had a long-standing relationship with uh, Blue Canvas Magazine, guys who really know, live, eat, and breathe art and we had the opportunity to talk to them about this and they seemed to be just as excited as we were. And as soon as we had our first meeting, we knew that that's who we were gonna work with. We wanted to not look at it as a art of game book, but look at this as an art book. The art of the game is very sophisticated and we wanted to show that through the quality of the print, through the different types of paper or fold outs, whatever we could do to make it stand out. Matt Nava, he literally came into our studio and he actually spent time with us explaining what each image was representing. As we were looking into what we could do with the book, we started looking at opportunities to do something really different. And one of the first things that came to mind was uh, a group called Daiquiri. The idea behind it was to really be able to give people an opportunity to see in three dimensions in their own living room all these different pieces that and eventually created what is now the Journey game. So what we really wanted to bring to this book, first and foremost, was to, to work directly with the content creators themselves. We wanted to ensure that the augmented reality experiences of the Art of Journey book would deliver a truly incredible experience that viewers would never forget. What better way to give back to the fans than to, for the first time, put fan art in our book and really kind of show um, the inspiration that other people had from playing this game and how it's really touched them. That is to me kind of the biggest indicator that this game resonates with people and that it's meaningful. It's just super exciting to see something that you've made get people feeling creative and get people making stuff of their own and I just love that so much. Journey means something different to everybody who both hears the soundtrack, who plays the game, and I'm sure anybody who looks at this book would have the same. And, and to me, that is that actually is the ultimate goal. I think that the best thing about the game and my experience in working on the game is that it had a real heart in it. Working on the art of Journey was definitely something that I feel proud of in that it's something that I think is moving to people. And so working on something like that it's hard not to become invested in it, it's hard not to become part of, of it in a, in a big way and feel like it's, you know, meaningful to your, your own life. I hope when you read this book that you'll be able to see how much love and work went into this game and take something away with that for the next time you play Journey.